Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. Fantastic to have you here because we are working on the Scottish Claybore. As you're very well aware, thank you for joining me on this series. Thank you for joining me today. This side here is at 120 grit on the hand sanded finish. This side here, uh, <laughs> it needs some hand sanding, so it's time to start hand sanding. <laughs> grit and holy moly that's taken a long time so much back and forth hand sanding I had to go all the way to 120 right at the beginning as I said worked our way up 120 180 243 2400 side to side straight along side to side straight along we've got it 400 grit that's all we need for a good etch on some Damascus because of course we've got some nice twist Damascus inside here this I'm now gonna put some oil on so it doesn't rust too much before the final finish. Don't want it to, to get too rusty. Give that a little wipe. And I need to clean up, finish, and oil the guard. But first, I need to clean up the mess. Where's my dustpan? Where did my dustpan go? Hmm. I found it right where I kept it. Got some burners heading out. Oh, Woo, it's snowing! It almost never snows here. This is amazing. So in regards to finishing this, now those boxes are out of the door and the workshop's a little bit clean and tidy. The ideal would be a wire wheel on a bench grinder. Second ideal, wire wheel on an angle grinder, but it'd be difficult to hold on to this without marring it in the vise. Third, ah, oh, that is sharp. Third ideal would be a wire wheel on one of these things, one of these kind of flex shaft, flex shaft things, but. Guess who was a numpty and didn't order any wire wheels for it? Uh, I was that numpty. So, I'm looking for a wire brush. Brush. Do not know where it is. Ah, I've got the wire brush. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna light the forge because we need to make the pommel. So while that is heating up, I'm gonna grab these belts that have just arrived and organize these. Ah, no, no such a day as good as abrasive day. I used those dies to form a very sharp taper here at the tip. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the dies to some follows so we can form the shape behind it before we put a flattening on it. That is gonna be the pommel. It'll get flattened off across the top so that there's enough space for us to peen the tang. It's gonna get cut off and uh, 
I've got some milling work to do, but first, I want an index so that I can clamp it in the mill. I need a flat spot. Best way to achieve this, power hammer. And of course I put my touch mark on it. Give it a little wire brush and uh, this should be ready to cool down. While that is cooling down, I am gonna teach Jamie how to grind his knife. That's not a knife. This is a knife. The first thing that we're gonna do is angle line in the vise, big G clamp, big grinder. First things first, establish your flat with the grinder. the scale ground up, looking fantastic. It's now time to go to the grinder. I put a big old chunky 36 grit on. This should help you out, help you out with the stock removal. First things first, we're gonna hold it like this. We're gonna establish our flat. Wherever you press with your fingers is wherever it grinds. So, if you want a flat, don't press in the middle of the blade because it's gonna hit the bevel. If you want a flat, press where it's already flat. There are two different angles there. One is much more like this, one is much more like that. We want one angle, and it wants to be about between the two. Did you notice when you did that, and you were hitting the edge first as a higher pitch? So that's where you can sometimes use your hearing to see how you're holding it. The reason for it is you didn't put pressure in the middle of the bevel. How that transition looks is a function of two things. It's a function of how flat this is and what angle that is. So, if it's doing this, it means either that's not flat or this has a varying angle. If it looks bad, there are two ways to fix it. One, bring the flat down. Two, bring the bevel back here, the bevel back here and the bevel back there without touching those high spots. Oakley doakley. So while he continues to work on that, that pommel should be cool. I'm gonna go into the bandsaw, and we're gonna cut it off, and then we're gonna go into the mill, and we're gonna use an end mill to mill ourselves out a slot that's gonna go the whole way through. Now it's not gonna look like it goes, why don't I just show you? Ah! It's a little, uh, little toasty. bad for a videographer, let me tell you that. Whoa! Hey, pretty impressed. That's not bad at all, Jamie. Grind line, obviously it's a little wavy, but that is not at all a major issue. I do a little more on that side. he had been using the file guide well. Apparently, you can learn a lot about making knives from editing videos on making knives. Well, how does it feel? You spent a lot of time in there with a the camera. How do, you, how do you like using the grinder? First time probably using it. Kind of feels like a, a day in the life of Alex Steele. It's surprising how hot this metal gets after like three seconds. Yeah. It gets hot. And then your gloves get hot and then they don't get cold. I don't know how you could grind without wearing these gloves. Great fun! Let's get back to it. I've got more machining to do. I've used the four millimeter end mill. And obviously, we have a nice deep slot in our pommel. It's now time to put this in the bandsaw, cut it off, and then go back to our old friend, a set of files, and our other old friend, time. The amount of time that all these projects take. Anyway, into the bandsaw, let's cut this off. Here is the pommel fresh off the bandsaw. It's gonna need some filing and handwork to get that to fit on here far enough that it's gonna stick out. We can grind it off a little bit and peen on the tang eventually. I tell you what, I think this forged look here 
Forged guard, forged pommel. I think this is gonna look pretty crazy. <laughs> Okay, it's time to heat treat the blade. So we're gonna light the forge. <laughs> Just spent 20 minutes marking all the holes up. We used the center punch to mark the holes and it broke the center punch. So we have to anneal it before we mark it. So we have to anneal it and then mark it all again. So in the forge it goes. This has been annealed, it's now cooling down, it's taking a long time, and in the meantime, decided that I'm gonna make a bolster. So this is a piece of Damascus steel, which was from the Damascus Plain Blades project. This was the spare piece that had some cracks in it, and we decided not to use it. I'm gonna use some of this material to make some bolsters. You're gonna go along here. So we're gonna mark those up, and we're gonna go cut these out roughly ready for being ground down. So to give you a little bit of a better context on the narrative of how this is going, Jamie cut off the material for his bolsters, marked out the tang on his knife, put it in the Bridgeport milling machine and used it to drill the holes while I finished up the fit up on the pommel. Uh, Jamie, where are you on your Bowie knife? The Bowie knife is going well. All of the holes in the handle are all nice and milled out now. They're all countersunk, taking a lot longer than I would have hoped it would have done, but they're all there. It's ready for heat treat. And that's fantastic. That's gonna get heat treated in another episode when, you know, it's, and that, that'll be good fun and it'll get finished up. We're gonna put scale Damascus bolsters. It's gonna be great. But of course, while he was doing that, I finished up the fit up here on our small little pommel, which I hope is gonna work wonderfully with a beautiful round swelling tapered handle. But the handle, got something special planned for the handle, which I'm excited to show you. So make sure you stay tuned. Hopefully the material for that will show up and we'll be able to start cracking on with that tomorrow in the next episode. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you very soon.